So obviously I'm not going to be able to use any of the stuff from the actual movie. And with that in mind, there will just be some footage from my latest chill hunts gen U stream. So feel free to throw this video on in the background and feel free to catch me on Twitch. Anytime I'm streaming, we usually do like gen U, Iceborne, all kinds of stuff. So feel free to join. Now, when I say that Legends of the Guild wasn't a good movie, I'm speaking of it just as a straight up movie. I'm not looking at it through the lens of a Monster Hunter movie. This wasn't a movie that I'm gonna run and tell people about and tell them they have to watch it. If I know the person is a big Monster Hunter fan, that's a different story. Legends is filled with all kinds of fan service and honestly, they did a pretty incredible job of giving it that Monster Hunter feel. You of course have the monsters themselves, which were given a true representation of how they are in game and the characteristics they have in those games. Seriously, one monster had me ready to fire up my switch just so I could hunt it. And that's because its attacks, tendencies, and just how perfectly annoying it was in the movie matched up so well. There's a lot of good and bad here, but I truly do think it's what we actually needed. Now, this is going to be spoiler free, so it may feel vague when I talk about some things, but you'll get the general understanding. Starting off with the bad, the biggest detractor for Legends was hands down the pacing. There's no no way this movie should have been anything less than an hour and a half to two hours with all the stuff they tried to cram into it. I've heard different things as to why it was rushed, like the company that was heading the project going completely under in 2019, but regardless, it doesn't change the state of the movie as it is now. They tried to give us interesting characters with some background and short little bits, which kind of falls flat because they're never really able to elaborate in a 58 minute time constraint. This unfortunately leads to some really awkward tonal shifts as well. It's like like if you were playing an RPG and your character is level 1 and then in the blink of an eye it suddenly jumps to level 80 and you have no idea how you got there or why you're there. This unfortunately spills into the side and supporting characters. We get a tiny taste of why they became hunters, what their personality is like, but before we can come away with a bond or forge anything like that with the said character, the movie is over. It's blatantly clear that this would have been much better suited as a series, but they did what they had to do, I guess. Lastly, on the bad side of things, the animation style was a bad choice in my opinion. To toss out a silver lining, the monsters and the way they behaved look absolutely fantastic, but this didn't so much carry over to the hunters or villagers. A lot of the audio and dialogue for some reason felt off. I had to check my settings a few times just to make sure English was what it was synced to. And then when it came to any kind of action scene, it seemed really weird with some of the animations and sounds that they just weren't really matching up. This may have been another time constraint or maybe they wanted things to be more 3D-ish with the recent releases of Worldborn and Rise. Regardless of the reasoning, I'm personally hoping that if we get subsequent releases that they're in like a 2D animation style or they polish this style quite a bit. Speaking of sequels or future releases, moving on to the good of Legends, this movie absolutely established a Monster Hunter series that is truly viable and wanted. Unlike the dumpster fire that was the Monster Hunter movie, Legends is very precise in fleshing out the world of Monster Hunter. You have Aiden who is as excitable as ever, like he's a light bow gun with rapid fire pun ammo. But if we're going to talk about puns, we surely can't leave out the mailing Nox, who delivers the kind of kitty puns you'd expect in a generation's or for you style of charm. The balance of nature is a focal point and established pretty well even inside this time constraint. The characters that help to make this balance clear and understood have so much potential. Through the short runtime, you definitely see the potential of those characters and leave the movie wanting to know so much more about them, but the little nibble we got was still a pound for pound net positive. The ace characters are a great foundation for future entries without a doubt. And there are even other characters with vast amount of potential too. I would absolutely love to get more into the background of Mei and Ravi. And I do have to say this, there's a scene between Mei and Paisley that is absolutely heartbreaking. Honestly, elaborating on any of these characters' background is pretty low hanging fruit, so we'll see if they pluck it. Also another personal opinion, but the ace gunner, Nadia, I feel like absolutely stole the show for me. Best girl, hands down. The monsters in this movie are spotlight stealers every time they're in a scene. There's even a large monster that gets like two seconds of screen time and I got super excited seeing it, seeing how beautiful it looked and the way that it was just acting on instinct as it would. It's not even a question for me. They truly nailed the monsters. It feels like the creators were fresh off some in-game hunts the way that the monsters were so accurately represented. Now there was a specific issue in this area but it's impossible 
able to really elaborate on that one without blatantly giving it away, so I'll let you pick that out. There's also a bit of a misstep when it comes to the gender of the monster, but I fuck that up all the time and get corrected by chat, so I can't really say much. Outside of those things, the monster animations, personalities, characteristics, and tendencies are so good, it had me giddy each time a new monster came on the scene and actually got to contribute. When it comes to fan service, this movie is loaded. Obviously, that isn't enough to catapult it into an overall good movie, but this is exactly what we needed. Once again, after being let down by that piss-filled balloon that was the Monster Hunter movie, people had tapered expectations. When it came to the actual representation of a game series, this community is truly passionate about. Legend stepped up in that time of worry and delivered a good fan service movie, and I'm happy to see that. There was obvious constraints that forced them to keep things vague and didn't give them the opportunity to flesh out characters with great potential, but maybe we'll get to see that in future series or movies. Please let it be a series though. They've gotten the monsters nailed in this one and that can only improve from here with such a solid foundation. That's what Legends did. It didn't blow us away, but it definitely satisfied our need for monsters in a movie. It set that foundation for not only a good Monster Hunter movie or series, but a good movie or series period. But that's gonna be it for this one. Don't go into this one expecting the Mona Lisa. Go into this looking to have your Monster Hunter itch scratched and you'll definitely be able to come away with a much more entertaining time. Even if it's not a good movie on its own, it's exactly what we needed for a foundation that will be able to lift up future entries. If you liked the video, let me know with that thumbs up or thumbs down. Comment your thoughts on the movie and try to be spoiler free, but if you're looking to stay spoiler free, enter the comment zone with caution. If you want to hit me up and further discuss the movie or Monster Hunter in general, join our Discord. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are links to Patreon and Twitch, or you can lightly tap that subscribe button to catch future videos. Have a great night, happy hunting, and I will see you guys in the next video.